Welcome to lesson one of C Sharp from start to finish. Today, we're going to get our scenario and start our initial planning of the project. So let's jump right in. Before we get started in the lesson, I want to remind you to subscribe to this channel. If you are subscribed, click the little bell icon and make sure you're getting the alerts when I add a new video. And while you check on that, could you also give this video a like? I know that we're just getting started, but liking a video is a simple way that you can make this course more popular, and that helps everyone. It increases the visibility of my videos on YouTube, which generates more income for me. It helps others out because they get introduced to this valuable content, and it helps you out because I'm able to produce more free videos. Okay, so let's get back to the lesson. So here's our scenario. We had a friend come to us and say, I want you to create a tournament tracker. We've got this office pool and we want to play each other in a way we can determine who's the best. So we're gonna create a bracket system and we're gonna have the computer tell us who to play in a single elimination style bracket. So at the end, the winner should come out on top, the person who's won all the games. So the model is the NCAA basketball tournament bracket for March Madness. So that's the basic scenario that our friend comes to us with. And that isn't enough to start the application, but it's enough for us to start planning. The first place you should always start is with requirements. Now you may say, I understand what the application is. I should just start figuring out how the code's gonna work. That's really the first rookie mistake that you'll make is the idea of, I know what the application should do, so I should start by coding. And really, we're gonna put off coding for about five or six lessons. And the reason why is because if we set a good foundation now, it'll make coding so much easier and we'll have less bugs. So trust me, this is important. So let's start off with the requirements and kind of flesh out what we've been given so far. So, so far we know we need to track games played and their outcome, so who won? So imagine you have four players playing and we'll have two games played and the winners of those two games play each other and then that winner would be the winner of the overall bracket. That's kind of what we're gonna do. We're gonna track those games that have been played and their outcome so we know who won, so we know who goes to the next round. We're also gonna have multiple competitors. I mean, that sounds obvious, but you really need to have it down on, on paper. Next, we're gonna create a tournament plan. Who plays in what order? It's not that we're given a list of who's gonna play. We have to determine who gets to play and when. And then we need to schedule games. How we schedule games, that's not been specified. But we know that we have to have some kind of list of these are the people to play and what order. We do know that a single loss eliminates a player from the tournament. We also know that the last person standing is the winner. So after all the games have been played, we should have one person left standing at the end. That's the winner. And that's really all the requirements we've, we've built so far. There's not a whole lot more to it yet, which means that the next thing we should do is ask a set of questions. We need to find out what the full requirements are, because here's the deal with any project whether this is a personal project, a project for a friend, or a project at work. There are always more requirements than what are specified. Your friend is not trying to hide information from you, but they have an idea in their mind and they don't always fully communicate it. In fact, they never fully communicate it. And so you have to kind of pull out what those requirements are and also what are the things they really don't care about. So let's go through and I'm gonna give you my list of questions that I have out of this scenario. Let's start with question one. How many players will a tournament handle? Is it variable? See, that's not something that's been specified. They said, we wanna do a tournament, you know, we wanna have a number of people play, but if it's a fixed number of people, that's important to know. The NCAA tournament is a fixed number of teams. It's 68 teams actually. The bracket's 64, but they put four more on. So they have a fixed bracket. But I'm thinking maybe this might not be a fixed bracket. But we don't know for sure. We need to make sure by asking the question. Number two, if a tournament has less than the full complement of players, how do we handle it? For example, 
if in my previous example, I said, you know, four players play, then the two winners of those games play each other, and that final winner is the, is the overall winner. But what happens if we had three players? How do we do that? Or in the case of the, uh, the NCAA bracket, what if they had 67 teams or 63 teams? Again, I have an idea of how we can handle this. Most tournaments like this have the idea of what's called a buy, which means that certain teams don't play in the first round. Instead, what happens is they have a first round buy, it's called, where they get a free pass. So they automatically get put into the next round. Now, we can explain more how that would work if that's what we're thinking we're going to do. But again, this comes back to requirements. Maybe they come back and say, no, you know what? We're always going to have the correct or the full number of players. If you're not familiar with brackets, what that would be is a multiple of two. So two people would work, four people would work, eight, 16, 32, 64, uh, 128, and so on. Numbers outside of that could cause a problem unless we've prepared ourselves for how we're going to handle it or just say we don't allow it. Number three, should the ordering of who plays each other be random or ordered by input order? This is another key thing to think about. When we're looking at who plays who, maybe the tournament organizers want to put that in some kind of order, or maybe we just want to randomize it. I would think we'd want to randomize it, but we really need to ask. Number four, should we schedule the game or they just play whenever? So here's the idea. If we have, say, two games in the first round, do we just say you play them whenever you want to play them and when both have been played, then we do the next round? Or do you say the first game is played at 9.30 a.m. on a Friday and the second game is played at 9.30 a.m. on a Monday? We have to understand what they're envisioning for the system. All right, next, if the games are scheduled, how does the system know when to schedule the games for? Do we say the games are 20 minutes long and we're going to start at this time and, and end when we're done the tournament? Or do we say, here's the open available time slots we have and the games are this long, fill up what you can and then continue day after day until the tournament's done? How does that work? But that question is only valid if we're going to schedule the games. Okay, so that's the first five, but guess what? I got more questions. If the games are played whenever, can a game from the second round be played before the first round is complete? Okay, so this won't work real well with our, my example of two games in the first round, one game in the second round. But what if we had a pre-round, you know, where the true first round is four games, and then the next round is two games, and the round after that is one game? So in that case, if two of those four games are played already, and those two winners happen to be playing each other in the next round, can they go ahead and do round two before the other four teams play each other to determine who plays the other game in that second round? We got to figure that out in order to know what we can allow people to do and not allow people to do if they can play whenever. Again, if we're going to schedule the games, this doesn't matter. Next question, does a system need to store a score of some kind or just who won? So this is what I'm thinking. Maybe we want to have more than just you won or you lost, maybe we want to have some kind of information about what the score was. Maybe for a, you know more prizes at the end. Uh, say, you know, highest point differential or closest win or luckiest player, you know, something like that. Or just to have, here's all my scores. Do you want to store that or not? All right, question eight. What type of front end should the system have? Is it a just a form like a, uh, a win form application? Is it a website or a web page? Is it a phone app of some kind? For those of you that want to jump right into coding, that'd be your first hurdle is we never really specified. Then the temptation is rookie mistake number two, which is assumptions. That's a huge mistake. Don't ever assume if you don't have to. If we just jumped in and started coding, we'd have to assume what type of front end it is or we'd have to ask the question, which is what we're doing here. It's just we're being intentional about it instead of being, oops, we have to find out more information. Next question, where is the data going to be stored? That's really important to know. We, we're going to generate a lot of data. We're assuming, and again, that's an assumption, but we're assuming that the application won't be running the entire tournament. Maybe it will. Maybe it won't store any data. But that question will spark that 
thought in the mind of the owner, the person who asked for this project, also known as a stakeholder, and we'll call that person a stakeholder from now on. So the person that, that wants this tournament tracker created is our stakeholder, and they would know, do we want to store data? And either tell us where they want it stored, or say, can you help me determine where we should store it? But that question will generate that conversation. All right, next question. Will this system handle entry fees, prizes, or other payouts? Usually when you have a tournament, you have some type of reward. Now maybe that reward is just, hey, you won. But maybe it's something more substantial. For example, if every player paid $10, then the winner could have, say, half of the, the overall income from the tournament. So eight players in the tournament, they each pay $10. Winner takes $40, the second place person takes $20. And we can go on down from there. So the question is, are we gonna do that? We're gonna have entry fees, we're gonna have prizes. We could have prizes without entry fees. We could have entry fees without prizes. We could have other payouts. But the important thing here is we ask the question. All right, so that's question number 10. We're done, right? Now we got even more questions. Okay, next question. What type of reporting is needed? We're going to win this tournament. The person's going to go through and win this tournament. Do we tell them they won? Do they just know? Do we have some type of scorecard? Or do we let everyone know here's the results of the tournament? What do we tell them? Like, is it just Bob won? Or is it the results of round one are in and here's the wins and losses with the scores? What do we need to know? So that's that's that question. It's a pretty broad question. But again, it's to, it's to spark that conversation that needs to happen. Who can fill in the results of a game? Are we going to allow anybody to say who won, who lost? Are we going to lock it down to you can only report on your game or you can only report your score or the administrator does everything and doesn't allow anybody to touch anything? What's this going to be like? Next question. Are there varying levels of access? And that kind of go goes along with question 12, but what we're asking here is, do we have some people that can do certain things or see certain things and others that have more access? We have to have someone who has administrator access, the ability to create a tournament and then also to enter information. But do we want to have a user that can just see the tournament? Maybe we want a view that's just the read-only view. That'd be a varying level of access. So do we need that? Or is it just that whoever uses the application can see and do everything? Number 14, should this system contact users about upcoming games? Now think about it. How would you know that you're going to play a game? How do you know that we're all the way through or mostly through round one and your game's up next? We have to let them know somehow. Maybe the tournament administrator just lets everybody know manually. That seems uh, counterintuitive, especially since we're creating an application right now. And this is probably one of those questions that your friend doesn't even have a thought about yet. They haven't thought, oh, how do we let people know? They just want to create a tournament tracker. So this question is probably going to spark a discussion of what's possible, what's available. And from that, you can kind of flesh out more of these requirements or maybe more of the features that are nice to have or would like to have in the future, but aren't really necessary for now. And the last question I came up with is each player on their own or can teams use this tournament tracker? So for example, if this was a doubles tennis tournament, there's not just one person, there's two people on a doubles team. So are we going to record that or is it just the team captain or the random person who came in first that we put the team in their name? That's a question that could be asked. My thought is, again, they use a, the example of the NCAA basketball tournament, the March Madness bracket. Well, a basketball team isn't just one person. It would be all 12 people or all you know, at least the five starters. Okay, we're talking about probably an office situation or a group of friends. So maybe it's not you know 12 people to, to a team, but maybe it's a three-on-three -three basketball tournament. In which case, a team of three. Or maybe it's just a ping pong tournament and it's each person is on their own. So the question is, can this tournament tracker handle both? Should it handle both? Do you want it to handle both? Or are we saying that we're going to lock into a certain avenue or a certain type of setup? And that, believe it or not, 
is all the questions that I came up with. Now, are there more that I could probably ask? Probably. I'm sure that as we get into this application, we're going to find out, oh, we should have asked that and we'll need to go back to the stakeholder. But those are the questions that I came up with that I thought, you know, these are the things that I'd ask right away up front to get some clarity on how this application should be built and what general direction I need to go. Now, I'm going to say this probably multiple times throughout this course, but don't stress out about, I have to be perfect here, but do work hard to get as much as possible up front. The more you have up front, the more likely it is that you set yourself up for success down the road. And with that, we're done with all the questions and we're also done with lesson one. We've gone over the requirements and we've kind of asked those questions to expand the requirements to what we need to know in order to get started. Now coming up next in lesson two, we're going to do what I call overview planning, which is we'll have the information back from the questions that we asked, and then we'll start taking a look at what does that mean for the application? And in the end, we'll have a good general direction for where we should take this application. Thank <laughs> you.